Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. My name is Mark A. Marple. And this is Lincoln Theater. And so I wanted to thank a couple of our sponsors who made it possible for you. Uh, their first off is Chuck and Katie Urban, who own Powerhouse Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep, yeah. Ram, Fiat. Yeah, that's right. A lot to our community, and they were the ones that helped us get another one of our great sponsors, McDonald's. Yeah. And you're gonna have chicken McNuggets and a chocolate chip cookie and sliced apples and water after this. Yeah. Yay! Great! I like that. Radio. We've been all over the radio with them. And Jimmy and Colleen Miner from Electrotech, who also helped us put together this show. So um, I know we have one school that's still to come, but they're going to quietly come in. We want to get the show started. So no further ado, ladies and gentlemen, from Selskin Musical.
everything done Running our own business, milling flour Bringing in an income Life is hard, running your own kingdom Paying staff, running through your income It's an expensive business, wielding power In my humble opinion Life is good, life can be bad too Come knocking on my door. That's what we sing most days, Dad. This, Emily, is my day of density. Day of destiny. You're right. But why would the king want to meet with you? Oh, oh my. Oh, I'm inviting commoners to the palace because I need money so bad. Still, desperate times, desperate measures. <laughs> so many tradespeople. Millions. Cooper. Fletches. But I wonder, what do these people do? No, oh, it doesn't matter. The thing is, can they resist this royal charm? <laughs> Hello, loyal subjects. What do you do? Eh, blah, blah, whatever. Oh, the silly simpletons would be so charmed they'd agree to pay higher taxes. <laughs> what this kingdom needs is someone to step in with progressive ideas, like I did with the business here. I could do a better job than the king. I'd certainly be fair. The people in this kingdom work so hard, they barely have enough to eat. <laughs> Father, are you all right? What will I say to the king? You know what I'm like. I open my mouth and things come out. Unplanned things, blah, blah, blah. Nonsense things, blah, blah, blah. You'll just think I'm a simple simpleton. Dad, you'll be fine if you listen to me and do as I say. Tell his highness you have an exceptional daughter. You? Well, I'm great at household management. You can make a little go a long way. I know my stuff and I get things done. And to think I originally wanted a boy. Dad! Okay, spin for me. Spin. 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 <laughs> Would you look at the shape of you? It's like you're made up of tiny bits of straw. You're worth your weight in gold, you are. And you can tell His Highness that. Tell His Highness about straw. No, gold worth my weight that bit. Tell his highness about gold. Got it. And you could tell him I'm single too. You're spindle too. Single. That's what I said. Eh, chum, 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 chum. Ding, higher taxes. After all, where's the harm? What could possibly go wrong? What indeed? So, so bring, bring it on. on. Subject, 
what do you do? Oh, you're a Fletcher serving in my army. A Fletcher, I bet you, well done you. Fletching and caring must be pretty tiring. Bravo, splendid, carry on your next. Hello, grubby subject, what do you do? Oh, you're a cooper in the royal warehouse. A cooper, super, you cook things up all day. Or do you cook chickens? Must be pretty tiring. Bravo, splendid, carry on your next. Hello, dusty tradesmen, what do you do? Sire, I'm a miller. I make flour. A miller? Hmm, what a thriller. Milling must be a bit of a grind. <coughs> Bravo, splendid. Carry on your next. I have a very clever daughter, sire. That must be terribly, terribly hard. Having a a daughter. She can make a little go a long, long way. Bravo, splendid, carry on your next. Hello, soiled subject, what do you do? Sire, I'm still a miller. A miller? Sounds familiar. Is it still a bit of a grind? Bravo, splendid, carry on your next. My daughter can spin straw to gold? Bravo, splendid, carry on your next. Hello, dirty subject, what do you do? Hang on, rewind, bring back that last one. My daughter's so clever and surprisingly strong. And she can spin straw into good. <laughs> well, that's what you said. <laughs> you will bring her to me at once. Straw into gold, eh? <laughs> bring it on, baby! Okay, right, so, um, Emily, you'll never guess. I told the king you can spin straw to gold and now he wants to meet you. Result, <sighs> that's not going to go well. Emily, I have good news. The king wants to meet you. Bad news, I told him you can spin straw to gold. I know, I know the things dad say. <laughs> stupid, stupid. Think, think. Emphasize the positive. It's not like she's going to the dark more. She's going to meet the king. If she knows why she's going to meet the king, she probably won't want to meet the king. But then, She'll miss her chance to meet the king. What could possibly go wrong? Best let her sort it out. She's really good at sorting things out. Daughter, I'm home! Dad, how did it go with the king? I have news. Good news? Ah! Bad news? Ah! A bit of both? I may have overstated. That is to say, Exaggerated. Go on. I said my daughter can, can... Make a little go a long way? Kind of, but not word for word. And did the king hear? He heard. Okay, so the bad news is that you embarrassed yourself by exaggerating my virtues to the king. There are worse crimes. And the good news? Well, this is the good news. 
He said he'd like to meet you. What? When? Ah, uh, now? Uh, Father, you are a foolish, foolish man. But I forgive you. Okay, I'll be off. Emily! Do you have your mother's necklace? Have this of mine. Remember us both. Make me proud. Emily! Did you leave a list of things to do? It's been a while since I was, um, in charge! daughter. Emily, your majesty. Melody. Emily. The clever Miller's daughter of whom I've heard tell. Who can make a little go a long way. So I've heard. Although not in those words. Well, what would you like to have me do for you? I think you can get. I can? Yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah. Something to do with household management? Well, you have a good sense of humor. I do? I suppose you'd like to see your room. I have a room? Follow me. Follow me. Because we're shy. Hello. Hello, good sir. Oh, hi. Look at you all these people just standing and smiling. So beautiful. Good looking there, I say. Hello. Shake it. Yes. Hello. 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 Oh, it's wonderful to meet everyone. Hello, my dear. Oh, there's more on this oh, side. There's Look. More Hello, everyone. How, hi, are, you how are you doing? I'm Emily. It's great to see you. Yes. So many townspeople. You know, this is a lot of payroll if you work here. Hello. Hi. How's everyone doing? Oh, I how are you? Me. They called you up yesterday. How are you now? Oh, good. Hi. Emily, please keep up. Hi. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi. Hello, 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 good sir. Hello, hello. How are you, sir? And how are you, my good man? Very good to see you. Oh, my, a pip pip doodly do, I say. Ha. Come. Here we are. Gosh, Majesty, there's draw. Precisely! Is there enough? If anything, there's more than enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not only got straw in it. Oh, no? There's also... Ta-da! A spinning wheel, so there is. Okay, Toot, so here's the deal. You're gonna spin the straw in the gold, capiche? Gold? As for your father's claim. My father's claim? By morning would be acceptable. And I, in return, will grant you your life. You'll grant me my life? Well, I will not terminate your life. <laughs> Wait, let me get this straight. So you want me to spin all this straw into gold or you'll kill me? Kill you? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I couldn't possibly okay, kill, you. <laughs> kill you. No, me? No. <laughs> now I have a chap who does that. The royal executioner will kill you. Executioner? Well, it's a work in progress. So, here's the straw, and here's the wheel, and here's the door. And here is the key. See you in the morning, bright and early. Good night, Majesty. <coughs> Leave it with me. Leave it with Emily. Emily, hold it together. Think about what you are. Think about what you're like. What am I like? Well, I'm Emily. I've never been a giddy girl, a sit and just look pretty girl. I've never been the sort to sit and mope. I don't wallow in self-pity. I address the nitty gritty. When life gets dark and difficult, I cope. I'm reliable, resourceful, I'm effective. 
active, I am forceful. I'm the go-to girl, if not always the nicest. Maybe other girls are cuter, but I'm the troubleshooter. I'm the one you want beside you in a crisis. I'm not inclined to silliness, but nonetheless, I must confess, there is a little part of me, a silly, frilly part of me, that harbors rather sheepishly a foolish, frilly fantasy that somebody might notice me. Perhaps someone of majesty might pluck me from obscurity, give me the opportunity to showcase my ability, my flair and my facility. Perhaps this not-so-giddy girl could make a difference to the world. Is it so wrong? Is it so strange to want to change what can be changed? But look at me. Just look at me. I'm not given to frivolities. I've got a lot of qualities. But not a single one of these is helping me. I cannot spin what can't be spun. I cannot do what can't be done. I was made up. Now I'm undone. <laughs> What's this? What is this scent? Is this the odor of despair? Oh. Dear, dear, there, there, tell me why, little lady, why all of these tears? I've been told that I have to spin all of this straw into gold. Oof! All of it? All of it, by morning. Oh, by morning. Or forfeit my life. Ouch. It's not fair, it's just not fair. No, I suppose it's not. I mean, really, why would it be? Wait, who are you? How did you get in here? Who are you? How did you get in? I don't think under the circumstances these are very good questions to ask. Which really is a pity, since I don't bother answering the ones I don't think are very good. <laughs> so think. Faced as you are with this impossible task, what do you really want to ask me? Could you help me? Good question. And the answer is possibly. Possibly? Probably. Probably. Well, what have you got to trade? Trade? In return for my help. Oh, um... This ring. Looks a bit, uh, cheap. It was my father's. Huh. I can work with that. Stand back! Stand back? What are you going to do? Spin? This straw? It's not gonna spin itself, you know. No, it's just gonna sit there and be... straw. Yeah, it's definitely up to me. Look out! You may be about to drop off. <laughs> by the shutter, in the shadow, by the shadow, in the stem, by the maggot, in the apple, by the jealousy of men, by the ache in every item to be more than what it is By the inkling in the atom that there's more to life than this By all the hurt that's hidden, by the seething and the shame You are bound to do my bidding when I breathe your secret name By the grasping aspiration in the commonest of stuff By the sweet insinuation it will never that we were born by all the hurt that's hidden by the seething and the shame you are bound to do my bidding when I breathe your secret name by the spindle in my fingers by the tingle in my skin the corruption in the structure of the yarn that I shall spin see me skin it to a frenzy see the molecules gyrate as I activate the envy of the subatomic state <laughs>
night. Would you cut that out? Now, you stay here. You never know. She might have actually done it. And we might not need you. Miller's daughter! It is I, the king! I'm coming in. Oh, there's no more straw. No, your majesty. But there is. There's actual real gold! Yes, your majesty. There's actually no straw left at all. No, your majesty, I'm sorry. I thought you wanted all the straw spun. Well, I did. Just that. Well, I thought, given all the straw, I, I thought there would be oh, more gold. More? There was a lot of straw. Oh, I'm sorry. A spinner can only spin what's been put before them. A very good point. Well, I'll give you more. More than? More than you ever had before. Come, follow me. Oh, Your Majesty, I'm sorry, but I thought that once you had seen... Seen what? Once you had seen what I had spun... What do you mean? Oh, we get better every time we come out, I tell you. Oh, there's Hello, here. Good, sir. How are you? And how are you? Great to see you all today. Hello. Hello. Oh, I love your bow. It's beautiful. Hello. Hello. Your Majesty, I'm really sorry. Oh, I thought that you would oh, see no. that there's... I mean, I have a lot Double. of bodies. Oh, hi, how are you? What's your name? Hello, everyone. Hi. Oh, look at you. Oh, you we all look wonderful today, don't we? Are you smiling? Smile for me. I want to see... There it is. Hello. Hello. Oh, how are you doing? Oh, tip, tip, doodly do, I say. Your Majesty, I'm sorry, but I thought you would see... See what? Please, come on, keep up. You would see that would there you isn't that more to me than just spinning. What you didn't spinning? There's nothing more than gold, my dear. Well, it's not my best thing. I have a lot of other qualities. Oh, don't put yourself down. Here we are. More straw. As for your request. Your Majesty, I'm sorry, but... Apology accepted. Nobody's perfect. Well, hardly anyone. Same deal as before. You will spin this straw into gold, or you will... So, straw, wheel, door, and the key. Show! <laughs> I'm not looking for sympathy, but the king has got it in for me. I've lived to find another day. What do I find? More blooming hay. I still can't spin what can't be spun, though it's been But not by me, not by me. <laughs> Perhaps by me. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, what a lovely bouquet. Despair, desolation, some anger. Well, more of a petulance, really. Nice. So, same story. More straw. Surprise, surprise. The king has offered you the same deal as before. Am I right or am I all right? Well, he... A rhetorical question. No need to answer. <laughs> uh, you know, you really should negotiate better deals. Well, it's not exactly a deal. The king didn't leave me any choice. Oh, well, there's always a choice, honey. Just because you don't like it doesn't mean there is not. Really? <sighs> Interesting dungeon you have here. Is it Mr... You know, if you look at the walls just like this, you can almost make out faces in the stones. I didn't catch your name. I didn't drop it. <laughs> what have you got to trade? What? I said, what have you got to trade? No, before that. I said I didn't drop my name for you to catch. Keep up, and you can trade. Oh, um, this necklace. Ugh, again, I must say, looks a bit cheap. I didn't say it was expensive, but it's what I've got. It was my mother's. Huh. I can work with that. Stand back. But of course, the king is going to come back, and then I'll have nothing left to trade. Oh, I'm sure you'll think of something. You're clever. You're lucky. Lucky? I've been treated most unfairly. We've all been treated unfairly, girly, but some of us are lucky. He's going to put me in an even bigger room with even more straw. He's not likely to let me leave. Well, yeah. Now that he thinks you can turn straw into gold, 
Who's going to want to keep you close? Well, I have always dreamt of living in the palace. Really? If I was in charge, I'd make the kingdom a better place to live in. <laughs> well, you've made it to the dungeon! <laughs> but how do you plan to get from here all the way up there to the throne room? Well, if the king really does want to keep me close, like you said, I think that there are more conventional ways of doing so. <gasps> I think I see where your thoughts are leading. How very audacious of you! Are you dreaming of wedding bells? No, I'm just considering possible avenues. <laughs> you and the king? Well, he thinks I can spin straw into gold. <laughs> what's so funny about the king wanting to marry me? Oh, what's funny is you wanting to marry the king. I can see he might, he might want to marry you. You're clever, you're lucky, and thanks to me, you're really quite the catch. But why would you want to marry that grasping, selfish idiot? Yeah! Yeah! Wait a second! I know why! Ambition! Aspiration! Hunger for power! Willingness to take responsibility and serve my country? Greed! Okay, hunger for power, but power for the right reason. Power doesn't need reasons, honey. Hunger's enough. You and I have much in common. I'm just saying that if the king does offer me a deal, I intend to negotiate. Well, let's see if I can keep you alive to negotiate another day. <laughs> Thank you, mister. Just mister will do for now, missy. Look out! You know how you get when I spin. <laughs> ah. Oh, my biddable, biddable stuff. Tell me all of your dreams. Well, who'd have thought that? <laughs> okay, it's been two days and still no word. Emily, Emily, perhaps no word is a good thing. She hasn't been thrown out which means she's been welcomed in. He probably saw how useful she was and didn't want to let her go, seeing as how things are falling apart here without her. I wish I'd kept the manual! If she won't send word to me, I shall send word to her. I shall send a scroll. Dear... Emily, no, too formal. Emily, hi, no, too breezy. Emily, I really, really miss you. Bit needy, needs to be warm, honest, to remind her about all the good things about life at home. Emily, Love, Dad, XOXO. Yep, nailed it. Send it off first thing in the morning. Please, now, you stay here. Probably won't need you. She did very well last time. Mila's daughter, it is I, the king. I'm coming in. Good morning, Emma. Emily? Lemony! Emily! Exactly! Here we go again. I don't think I like the way you just spoke to me in my presence. Well, I don't think I like the way you keep locking me up in a room full of straw and threatening to kill me. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? No, but I can guess what you're thinking. That's right! The bigger room, more straw! Come, follow me! No. I think you'll find everything. I'm sorry, what did you say? I said no. <laughs> well, what do you mean, no? I want a better deal. A better deal? I'm offering you your life. What's better than that? I already have a life, or at least had one until I met you. The way I see it, you'll keep locking me up in a room full of straw until I can't spin it anymore, and then you'll have me killed. That's rubbish. Look, I am really unused to being spoken to this way. But I do find it strangely energizing. 
This ends here. I'm not going into another straw-filled room unless there are seriously revised terms and conditions. You do not prize your life. You do not prize my life. I prize my life quite highly. Shall I give the order to the royal executioner? Is that what you want? Of course not. Why do you behave like this? Like what? Having people killed who won't do what you say? Well, I'm a king. I have responsibilities. Like? <laughs> you wouldn't understand. Oh. Oh, the crown weighs heavily upon me. Oh, do you have a weak neck? <laughs> Look, what kind of king would I be if I didn't kill people who displease me? A gracious, compassionate one who respects the rights of his own human subjects? Oh, come on, I'm being serious here. I mean, knowing your accomplishments as I do. But you do not know the half of my accomplishments. I think I know the main half. This may surprise you, but spinning is not my best thing. Not by a long shot. Well, as the most accomplished young lady in the kingdom, your place is here. In the palace? Precisely. Close to you? That's right. By your royal side, you might say? You might go. So if you really want to keep me in the palace, close to you, by your royal side, why don't you offer to marry me? <laughs> oh my! Marry her! Look at her! Oh, she's crazy! Laugh louder! Oh my! Marry her! You jest! Oh! 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 My! Oh! Oh, you don't jest! Oh, well, look, try to be, well, realistic here, eliminate me, Billy Bong. Emily! Just that. You are a commoner, and I am a king. And while it's very flattering that you look at me this way, as a man. To be honest, Majesty, I don't look at you that way. I'm just trying to be practical. Practical? Well, I get the impression that you don't want to kill me, which is sweet of you, and I won't go along with the spin-or-die deal, so the only practical option is marry me or kill me. Your choice. You don't offer me choices, I'm the king! No, you're just a little man with a big crown who's greedy for gold and doesn't respect the rights of his own subjects. Look, I'm really unused to being spoken to this way. Though I do find it strangely invigorating. So let's say maybe I do find you, um, well, accomplished, just that. I'm invigorated. Undeniable. And maybe I do see you as, well, well, very, very attractive, yes. One must ask themselves, what would the neighboring kingdom say? What kind of man are you? I'm not a man, I'm a king! Okay, that came out wrong. I'm a king, thank you. Now. What kind of man am I? Well, I'm a kingly man. Well, you could do with being a bit more of a manly king. Enough, Melanie! Emily! Whatever! I order you to stay here and spin. No! It is your duty to make this kingdom prosper. There are better ways of making a kingdom prosper. I can't believe you'd rather die than keep spinning. I'd rather go into the dark more. Whoa. Gosh. Better the dark forest than this half-life. <laughs> there must be more.
certainly led your place outside the uh, royal comfort zone. You called me Emily. Does that mean you want to... Offer you a better deal. Yes. I'm a new man now, and I am a king. And I will not be dictated by previous pronouncements. So, my revised terms are, you spin the straw into gold one more time. Whereupon, subject to your successful transmutation, I will agree to marry you. Or, we will give you to the royal executioner. Okay, so let me get this straight. If I spin the straw into gold one more time, you'll not only not kill me, but you'll make me your queen? As long as once made queen, you raise royal revenue, or you go back to the dungeon and get to spin. Okay, but I shall receive full royal powers first. Deal? Um, okay, so if you could just spin this lot here, and then in the morning we can get to the, the marriage or whatever. I'll see you in the morning. Good night, Majesty. Good night, Emily. So here we are. Same room, more straw, last time, one or the other. So where's my friend? Come out, come out, please, Mr. Mr. Whoever you are, Mr. Helpful Cleverness, Mr. Gold Spinner, Mr. Mr. Gold Spinner, Mr. Gold Spinner. <laughs> uh, I just stopped by on the off chance. Wasn't sure I'd got the right place. <clears throat> you don't seem so downhearted today. Nevertheless, it's really good to see you. Mr. I never got your name. No, you never did. <laughs> uh, you, Emily, are very pleased with yourself. You're giving off the distinct odor of optimism. Ooh, I can smell it from here. All for a slip of the thing stuck in the dungeon with more straw than scents. Even so, it's really good to see you. What would you like to trade? Trade? Well, the king has offered to marry me, so I can give you anything you want. Land, wealth, titles. Um, not interested. What have you got right here, right now? Well, obviously I don't have anything right here, right now. Oh, well then I'll be off then. Nothing for me here. No, wait, <laughs> please, name your price. Ooh, a price with a name. What an interesting concept. But not right here where I'd like things. I was wrong about you, Emily. Not so clever or lucky after all! <laughs> no, wait, please! I could have married royalty. I could have been Queen Emily. I could have had a family. I could have... Emily, maybe you do have something to trade. I gave you all of my jewelry. I'm not thinking trinkets. I'm thinking twinkles that lead to dimples. What? I could have married royalty. I could have had a family. You've got a twinkle in your eye, honey, beneath that tear. Do I? I'll trade you for the twinkle. What do you mean? If I spin the straw to cold one last time, and if the king agrees to marry you, you might, just might, have a little baby. Well, I suppose that could happen, so... So... Wait, no, no, that's wrong! Your choice! The king will be so disappointed to see all of his straw unspun, and he'll have to call out his royal executioner! But that's our deal, isn't it? Well, the king and I might not have any kids. We might not want them. We haven't actually talked about this. I realize there are no guarantees. Yes, it all is very hypothetical. It is. Twinkles are, aren't they? But if the twinkle grows to be a child, it will belong to me. Emily, don't you agree? 
Yes. Good. Let's spin. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a spell of privilege, of appetite and artifice To leverage the avarice that's at the very heart of us By the anguish of the fortune, the innocent sudden By the victory that's imminent, by what will be mine to Yes, but this isn't even my best thing.
guys sing along, you might get to play with some beach balls. You guys want to do that? Okay. Dum, 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 Two, a one, two, three, four.
remember me? Does this face ring a bell? Who is this? Can you tell? Start! Start! <laughs> Take my child. Your child? Your child? She's been mine from the beginning. You gave me no choice. <laughs> oh, there's always a choice. Don't give me that. Please, I'll give you anything. Land, gold, titles, anything. Gold? <laughs> and why would I want land or titles? I'm already baron of the forest. I'm the lord of the lost. I'm the duke of the dark moor. <laughs> anyway, I want something living. Something I can sing lullabies to, though mine tend to be more of a hullabaloo. <laughs> but you saved me. If you ever cared about me, I never cared. What drew me to you was the succulent smell of despair. Let me give you more then. Yes, set me a task, an impossible task. Give me false hope. I can give you despair. Oh, how wonderfully desperate. Mr. You never told me your name. No. You don't know my name. Very good. We'll have some sport before I take my prize. <laughs> the dealers will play our game. I won't, I might, depending on my appetite and mood. I'm fussy what I choose to be. I'm partial though to tender meat. And what this princess is another man's food. Yes, one man's princess. Jest. You wish! Three days! Emily! Hello, Emily! I need your help to find names. Ah, oh. baby names. Oh. No, not baby names, not now. I need you both to listen. We're listening. Okay, so I never did spin all of that straw into gold. What? Tell him, Father. When I said she could spin straw to gold, I was exaggerating. Exaggerating? Well, I was making it up. No, it was, it was a metaphor. A metaphor? Uh, the straw represents ordinary, everyday things, while the gold represents special qualities. You fibbed. You fibbed. You lied to the king. But how did you? Yes, how did you spin? A strange creature did it for me. <clears throat> so when you said spinning wasn't your best thing, you were just... Telling the truth? Yeah. But a strange creature. That was kind of him. Well, he didn't do it for nothing. No. Well, what did he try? Well, the first time it was for the ring I wore, and the second time for my necklace. And the third time. Well, the third time I had nothing left to trade, it looked like I was going to die. To die? Well, you were going to kill me if I didn't spin the straw into gold. Okay. Anyway, he came back and he said that if he could spin the straw into gold one more time, and if we got married, and if we had a child, then he would... He would what? He would have that child. What? You promised my firstborn child to a strange creature? Our firstborn child, yes. But why? Why would you? Because if I had it, we wouldn't have a firstborn child. Because we wouldn't have married. Because I would be dead. Because you were going to kill me. Yes. 
Well, it was wrong of me to put you under such pressure. If I hadn't lied, then none of this would have happened. True. Well, you didn't have to threaten to kill her. I have very old-fashioned ideas of kings. I'll say. Okay, none of us acted perfectly, but I have negotiated a loophole. If we can guess his name in three days, then the deal is off. Listen, I don't mean to be old-fashioned, but couldn't we just bring the royal execution out of retirement? No, the spell is bound by the same spell that turned the straw into gold. I called for the guards. They couldn't hear me. We need names. Yes, yes names. Ah, well, we, we will go out for the team and, and we will find names. The Queen needs names. 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 His names. Her names. Nick names. Sir names. Trip names. Last names. You names. Star names. You names. Two names. and then I'll start on this end. And we'll meet in the middle end. Yeah. Hi. Hello, sir. What is your name? Yes, I love that name. Lovely name. We will use it. What is your name, hey. my dear? Miss Tucker. Hello. What is your name? Griffin. Yes. Griffin. Yes. Griffin. What is your name, my dear? Gabby. And a friend named Gabby. Very stupid, though. She was very naughty. What is your name? Hi, oh, what's your name? Noah. Hi. I love that name. What is your name, good sir? My name's Ryan. And your What's my name? I'm the middle. Ezra. Lots of Bible names I see. I like it. What is your name, my dear? Kennedy? Oh! Back when I was just a wee chap, I had a crush on a young girl named Kennedy. She turned me down though. She said she didn't like me. Hello, what's your name? Brody. Hey, Miller! Miller, we got a Brody here! Hi! Hi! I think we've got enough. Uh, oh, yeah, she's in charge! Yes, we will give it to her yeah. and she can decide. Yeah, Come. yeah. Let the challenge begin! Jim, John, Pete, Pat, Jeff, George, Mike, Matt, Keith, Clive, Kip, Ken, Bill, Bob, Ben, Len, Stanley, Sydney, Stephen, Sven, Alvin, Calvin, Elvis, Elvin, Malcolm, Maxwell, Memphis, Melvin, Cedric, Sherlock, Aldrich, Baldwin, Bobcat, Pilchard, Balcock, Aldrin, Roger, Richard, Rupert, Roland, Aldrin, Aldrin? No! <laughs> Horace, Doris, Foresterine.
but we do need better names. Travel further, go to remote places, ask remote people. Yes. Oh, those people in the back, they look remote. Yeah. Come. Thank you. Oh my gosh, so nice. Hello, sir. What is your name? Serena. 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 Mama Mia, Evie. Yeah. Oh, Cerrito, I love it. What is your name, sir? I don't Daniel. know that. What? Mark. I can't. What a wonderful name. Hello, hi. hello, hi. how are you? What is your name? Hi. Mark. Hi. Oh. Hi, D. What is your name? Oh. oh, don't be ridiculous. What is your name? What? Enrique. Suzanne. That's Susan. not a name. What is your name? Ah. Jackson. Enrique. What is your name? Say that again. Oh, well, I guess I don't know you. Everyone keeps saying it. That's not a name. It can't be. No. What is your name? Hey, hey, huh? King. Hey, King. Yeah, you got names? I've got loads, my friend. I do too. Well, let's kill them. One more name. Yo, your names. Yo, I got them all. Oh no, I got them all. Name. We can't use it. My love, 
what you're asking. To go to the deepest, darkest pits of the dark forest. Oh, I'm so afraid. This is all because of me and my stupid, stupid boasts. So clearly, I should be the one to go. No! No, I shall go! Look, I, I, I know it was wrong of me to, to try and make that happen and then put you under such pressure. Well, since I am the father and the king, and I should be taking responsibilities and just keep it. I'll just go. I didn't expect that. There's more to him than meets the eye. I hope so, because there needs to be. There's more to him than once I thought. More than I could see. He seemed at first. quick but he is true and he will do what he must do as king and as a man we'll see the very best of him see what we never guessed of him for all our hopes now rest He will come back. Of course he will. He has to. John Bravo, that thing. Yes, that was truly, truly brave. And and well, I went to the deepest, darkest steps of the forest. <coughs> the wind howled. The thorn scratched. The very forest seemed to be against me. I could see creatures everywhere. Well, I could hear them. Well, I could ill imagine them. What did you find? I did as you had bid me do. For love of her, for love of you. I turned my face towards the dark. The road was harsh. The choice was stark. Till to the deep dark woods I came I faced my fear to find a name In the deepest part of the darkest wood Where nothing lives that's any good I came upon this nameless man Who danced about his fire and sang The strangest song I'd ever heard and I remember every word They say it's not just what you know but who And I don't doubt them They say it's not just who you know but what you know about them Bones, but words go so much further If no one living knows your name You can get away with murder <laughs> A word few loves, ridiculous, beyond you are not one of us Ridiculous, 
should name the baby. <gasps> Perfect. Susan. Susan, hello. Um, what did you think about our American premiere? Oh, over the top. Mm -hmm. I've seen many shows at this school, mm -hmm. and this was just 
Incredible. Really, really? Uh, so much talent. Mm -hmm. Am I supposed to look at you? Sorry. <laughs> so much talent and um, such energy and the mm -hmm. audience loved it and it was just incredible. What we was, all loved it. What was your favorite part about the show? Oh. Maybe just seeing the raw talent of these young kids, how talented they now were. This is only high school. Yeah, and the message they brought about for women mm -hmm. and the children in the audience, what a lesson they got. I mean, it was incredible, really. Mm -hmm. I came from Tampa all the way from the other side of the state, and it was worth every moment. Well, we appreciate you coming out and seeing our show. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Hello, I think this is Princess Emily. Yes. Who are you actually? I'm Julia Banfo. All right, yes. Um, so what is your favorite part about working in this show? Well, it's been really fun to like figure out the jokes that work with all the children, mm -hmm. because I've never been in a kid's play before. Mm -hmm. So it's been fun to like get to talk to them and interact with them. Mm -hmm. What? What inspired you to want to be a part of this American premiere? Well, it sounded like a really cool experience because it is the American premiere, mm -hmm. so I've never been a part of something like that. And I wanted to like push myself because I'm always in like older roles and I wanted to do something like Princessy and Young because that's what I always love to do. Mm -hmm. So if you could choose, would you want to do a musical more Disney fairy tale or more, you know, like Rent? Weren't you in Rent? Yeah, I was in Rent, and it's actually more fun to be a Disney princess, I think. Mm -hmm. Like Rent, I was playing something, I was Mimi, so I was playing something like completely different from myself, and this is more close to myself, mm -hmm. and I like seeing the parts, like the, all this high soprano stuff. Right, it's really right. Fun. So if you had any advice for somebody that wanted to become an actress like yourself, what would you choose? <laughs> that you just have to do it. You have to start auditioning and you have to build up your confidence. Mm -hmm. And like, I think voice lessons helps tremendously in acting classes and just getting out there and doing it. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate you in this cast. Thank yes, you. You're so welcome. Thank yes. you. So here with me, I believe I have Rumpelstiltskin. Yes, hello. Yeah, who are you actually? My name is Sydney Aparicio. I go to Lincoln. I'm a senior. A senior? Yes. <laughs> so what inspired you to want to be in this American premiere? Um, I absolutely love theater. I was really, I would be happy with any role and I was really excited that I got the lead mm -hmm. and it's did you did you try for the lead um, I mean yeah initially I actually thought it was gonna lean towards a different character but mm -hmm. when I got Rumblestilskin I was surprised and really excited yeah. to uh, be someone evil which is a character I've never done before I've never been anything like evil <laughs> so I've never had like the crazy makeup like you know like Elphaba type makeup <laughs> yeah, with like, like, green and like yeah like yeah. insane stuff so what's your favorite part about the show um i would say the definitely the reactions from the kids on all the funny bits mm -hmm. it i i cannot believe how like i i wasn't sure how the kids would react to everything and mm -hmm. i was really really so pleased that they were just laughing at everything and they were getting into it and I know as like as kids I wasn't sure if they were gonna be into a show mm -hmm. you know yeah. because kids can't sit still and they'd probably rather watch like a movie or something mm -hmm. but they were really into it they were booing and cheering that and means you did your job right yeah I mm -hmm. yeah it was uh, the um, I couldn't do it without like the set designer because we had this really cool entrance through like a uh, what's it called a ch what's it what's it called at a at a hotel when they have the door that turns a uh, revolving door. revolving door yes we had the revolving <laughs> door and I went through it mm -hmm. and I snuck through it um, and then. Uh, Costuming. I have this weird biker, like Mad Max thing going on <laughs> with spikes coming out of it, uh -huh. uh, like porcupine ish. And, yeah, you look like a porcupine. Um, it's fantastic. Yeah. Well, we really appreciate you in the show, and I'm glad you got to be our Rumple. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yep. That's really nice. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. All right, so who do I have with me here? Gunny Gun Hall. Who are you in the show? I'm the king. So what inspired you to want to be a part of this American premiere of Rumpelstiltskin? Uh, one of my good friends, Tiffany Bass, who I'm talking to right now, she got me into mm -hmm. uh, acting last year. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, because she kept on me and we worked and she mm -hmm. helped me a lot, I got to be in one of the greatest things that's happened around Tallahassee yeah. in a long time. Well, I'm very thankful that you were open to being into theater because you have some raw natural talent. Thank you. Yes, Thank yes, you. you're very welcome. So what is your favorite part about being the king in the show? My favorite part mm -hmm. is probably entertaining the kids. Okay, when when they start screaming and shouting and laughing, and I get to go play with them, that's just mm -hmm. that's a little theater high. A little theater high, yeah. All right, so if you could decide, would you rather be singing or acting? Which one would you prefer? Acting, definitely. Acting, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think the kids approved of that as well. <laughs> well. It wasn't that bad. Yeah, but you're also a football player, right? Yes, I played football for seven years and I joined theater because again, you and then mm -hmm. just so happened that doors, more doors opened through theater mm -hmm. than ever did through football. So if you so. had for advice for anyone that wanted to be in a musical, what would it be? 
do it. Do it? Yeah, just do it, like Nike. Like Nike, you know? <laughs> just do it, just do there's it. No, okay. I mean, there's, the possibilities are endless, and if you commit to it, you can pretty much do anything. I mean, look at me, I didn't mm -hmm. know anything about it, and I came in, and mm -hmm. here we are now, so. Well, thank you so much, we're glad you're in the show. Yes, ma'am, thank yes. you. All right, who do I have with me here? I'm the executioner. And you're also someone else, too. Am I? Am I? Oh my gosh, yes I am, <laughs> sorry. Uh, at the very beginning, I am the pregnant mom with a child. And it's a complete plot twist because you look nothing like that. I know, it, the fat suit is huge. It's, she wears a fat suit. What is your actual name? Alyssa Merlin. Alyssa Merlin. So yes. what inspired you to want to be a part of this American premiere? Um, I mean, besides the fact that it's American premiere, I love uh, the theater program at Lincoln. So I was like, yeah, might as well. It's something I've never done before either. So what's your favorite part about being this role? Um, my entrances are always very spontaneous spontaneous and they're very sporadic and it always gets the kids going mm -hmm. which is what I love. So. Yes, I think the kids very much enjoy your presence. So if you had any advice for theater and being in a musical, what would it be? Um, being in a musical, it would definitely be really listen to the director and the musical director because they are there for you to help mm -hmm. and along with all the cast members. like. You, you need to listen to everybody around you because mm -hmm. everyone here is to help you. And to help you, that is the whole point. We're one big happy family, am I right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much thank for being you. in the show and being a part of our interview. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Can you give me your name, your grade level, and what role do you play in this musical? Hi, I'm Cameron Casey. I'm in 11th grade, and I played the Miller. The Miller? What is your favorite part about playing the Miller? Uh, definitely the interactions with kids during the naming songs. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just awesome to see their faces light up when you give them attention, mm -hmm, definitely. They, they love it. If you had any advice for anyone that wanted to be in a musical, what would it be? Oh, definitely just on your own, just listen, listen to musicals. Just mm -hmm. listen to musicals myself, like it's just given me so much to work towards. Did you want to be in this field? Uh, I'm not sure yet, but it, sure? I, would, I, would, I would love to do this for the rest of the my rest life. Of that life? would be awesome. So what's your favorite part about being in the show? Uh, just being with everyone, mm -hmm. being a, uh, being like a team, basically, mm -hmm. just going out there and putting on a show that these kids will really enjoy. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know? So if you could decide between acting and being in a musical, which Whoa. one would you decide? Oh, I'd, I'd be in a musical, a musical? In a heartbeat. A heartbeat. I heartbeat. love singing. All right. Well, thank you so much for being oh, in our show. You're talented. You. It's great. Thank you. Yes, you're very thank welcome. You. Thank you. Hi, I'm Tiffany. What's your name? I'm Bernice Everhart I from Pace Secondary. Fantastic. What yeah. did you like about our show? It was amazing. The voices was good, great. The mm -hmm. characters really played their part. I really think, being that we watched the videos, mm -hmm. it really was fun and entertaining. That's fantastic. Yes. What was your favorite character? Uh, Rumpelstiltskin, and uh, mm -hmm. and I liked the king. He was very. He was very funny. Yes, he he played the part of different roles. Right. He was very well, good. I appreciate you coming out to sing our show. Oh yeah, it so was wonderful. Thank you so much. I would definitely come again. Yes. Thank you so thank much. You. Bye. I, I, hi. 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 I, what is your name? Mrs. Kerner. Mrs. Kerner. Melissa Kerner, yes. Where are you from? Buck Lake Elementary School, third grade. Oh. Hi, what, did you enjoy our show? We loved it. Really? What yes. was your favorite part? Oh, it's too hard to know. Um, I like the interaction that they mm -hmm. did with the audience. That mm -hmm. was really great. The kids loved that they asked them their names. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, I mean, everything. It was wonderful. Did you have a favorite character? Uh, um, I think that I liked the common people the best. The common people? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, thank you so much for being your school and everything. Of course. Yes. Thanks for having us. Yes, we, we, hope, we hope to see you again. Yes, of course. Thank of course. you so Thank much. You. So what do you think about the play? I really liked it and all the characters are funny, especially the executor who was trying to kill her after the um, king came in and Rumpelstiltskin was pretty funny. Yeah. Did, you, did you tell others about it? Yes. Like everybody who was sitting around me was laughing. And it was very funny, and I enjoyed it. And I want something else like this again. And what's your name? Jamesia. Okay. How did you get here today? Our Frank names. What's your name, and what school did you come from today? My name is Nefertari Burns, and I came from Our Frank Nails Middle School. That's fantastic. Step forward for me. All right. What was your favorite part about the show? Um, I actually enjoyed all of it. It was really good, and it was um really really funny. And I'd come back and see it again. Who was your okay. favorite character? Uh, kind of like all of them. Really? Yeah. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for coming. You're welcome. Thank you. I'll take a <laughs> There you go. All right. Hi. What's your name and what school are you from? Kyrie and Nims. Nims. All right. What was your favorite character? Emily and the King. The King. Why was that? Because they were funny. They were really funny. What was your favorite part about the show? The name guessing part. The name guessing part. Did you guess any names? 
No. No. But it was still great, right? Well, I said Mickey. You said Mickey? Well, that was fantastic. Do you like Mickey Mouse? Yeah. That's fantastic. All right, thank you so much. Have a great day. Y'all give me a weird time. All right, hi, what's your name and what school are you from? Tamara, you saying I'm from Nams. That's fantastic. What was your favorite part about the show? When they was guessing the names. Guessing the names? Did you guess any of their names? No, I don't know. What was your favorite character? Rumpelstiltskin. Rumpelstiltskin? Why was that? Because she was funny. She was funny? Was she kind of scary? That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming out and seeing our show. You're welcome. Yes, thank you. Have a good day. Good hey, night, guys. Hey, can I ask, like, can I ask you what you thought of the show? Oh, yeah. It was amazing, oh, here. I believe. What, what's your name? And Miss Ambrose. Miss Ambrose. Yes, I'm the music for... teacher at NIMS. At NIMS, fantastic. Yes, I did. What was your favorite part about the show? Oh, my gosh. the Emily's voice. Emily's voice? It was she beautiful. Beautiful, she, I know. She has a, all the voices on stage, mm -hmm. all the all the mm -hmm. harmonies and the, you know, music. It was, mm -hmm. it was amazing. What was your favorite part about the show? Hmm, my favorite part about the show was the executioner. the executioner. She was funny. She's adorable. She was funny. Well, thank you so much. No problem. Thank you guys for having yes, us. You we too. really appreciate we it. No, we appreciate you for coming oh, out. Oh, you guys are so, so kind. Much. Have a great day. All right, you too. Yes, you bye. Hi. Hi. What's your name? Armani. Armani, what was your favorite part about seeing Rumpelstiltskin? My favorite part was the singing. I really enjoyed it. Everyone sounded very well. What was your favorite character? Uh, Rumpelstiltskin. Rumpelstiltskin? Why was that? Uh, the costume and everything about it. Mm -hmm. Was she funny? Yes. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> Did you... What was your favorite part about the show? Hmm. My favorite part was probably the beach balls coming out and interacting with the children. Yes, that's fantastic. What was your favorite part about the show? I think my favorite part was the interacting with the crowd. With the crowd? Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for coming out, you guys. You're welcome. All right. We'll see you next time, I hope. Hi, guys. What's your name? Kaylee Bram. Kaylee Bram, what's your name? Autumn Whitfield. That's fantastic. What did you, what was your favorite part about seeing Rumpelstiltskin the musical? The singing and the dancing. Mm -hmm. singing They're the all so good at singing. Really? All right. What was your favorite character? Rumpelstiltskin. Rumpelstiltskin, why was that? Because he, he, she was so like unique and I loved their part. Mm -hmm. And they acted and sang so good. That's, what was your favorite character? The king. The king? Why was that? Um, I liked his voice. Oh, really? Yeah. He's pretty funny. Well, thank you guys so much for coming out and seeing our show tonight. Hi, Lita. Hi. Thank you. Who are you and what are you with our show? My name is Lita Keeley and I am the stage manager for Rumpelstiltskin the Musical. And we appreciate you so much. You have no idea. <laughs> well, we appreciate you, Tiffany. <laughs> well, thank you so much. What is your favorite part about being stage manager? Honestly, it's just making sure that everyone's staying safe because that's always a huge risk to have. So people being safe, people being in the correct places, mm -hmm. it's just, it makes me happy knowing that everyone's being safe and responsible. What is, is this your first time being a stage manager? First time being a, spa a stage manager and then um, just first time actually being able to work a huge show like this. Oh wow, well what brought you into getting into theater? Um, well originally I got transferred out of um, a class mm -hmm. into theater, mm -hmm. and then I had so much fun with it because I'm just like, this is like I can actually be weird and you yep. know be normal at the right? same time. It right? was like exploring myself, and then learning how to manage all of this mm -hmm. was just realizing that I can make a career out of this. To mm -hmm. where if I'm like if I have stage fright, then mm -hmm. I don't actually have to be on stage. Yeah, that's incredible. Loopholes. What did? <laughs> what was your favorite part about working with the cast? With this cast alone, it was just everyone's high energy, everyone was really excited, lots of fun, big smiles. It was kind of like a mix of Disney World and Universal all mm -hmm. together in just really a fun. small cast. Mm -hmm. it was, oh, it was just a blessing. Well, thank you so much for being our stage manager. I appreciate you so much. Well, I appreciate you so much. I'll give you a hug. That's so of cute. Course. Hello, and you are the director of Rumpelstiltskin? That's correct. That is fantastic. And you are the assistant director, right? I am the assistant director. Awesome. <laughs> what is your favorite part about directing this American premiere? The, the, the First off, what Thomas Hewitt Jones and Matt Harvey gave us mm -hmm. was just wonderful material. And we were able to, you know, basically create additional characters because theirs was a smaller cast when we did this, but we wanted to do something that would include quite a few high school students. Mm -hmm. So we have, almost, what, 30 in the yeah, cast? Yeah, we have about 30, almost 40. So, and uh, we had them help create their own characters and costumes, and they became the townsfolk. And mm -hmm. obviously, I think the kids like it. Our beach ball scene, we owe that to you guys. Mm -hmm. That was fantastic. What, what, don't be biased, but which one is your favorite character to watch? I, I, I mean, they're all great, but I mean, I mean, the king is enormously funny. Mm -hmm. So is, and what a great voice, uh, Cameron, who plays the Miller. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, uh, Emily can sing the phone book. 
She's just got this beautiful voice. Mm -hmm. So uh, Julia Banfield. Mm -hmm. and, and don't forget our Rumpelstiltskin. Yeah, well, Rumpelstiltskin. And I forgot to mention the king's name is Gunny Gunhall. And Rumpelstiltskin is mm -hmm. Sydney Aparicio. And uh, again. She knocked it out of the park. <coughs> I don't know what else say. to say. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, we appreciate you very much being our director. E2 Brutai. Thank you so much. Ciao.